So this is the first time I'm going to try to attempt to uh, resurrect this uh, Pang board from Capcom. Um, these before the CPS2 with the battery. This actually had a battery on it, and these things could suicide as well. I've never done it before. I picked up the board cheap. And I figured let me get some practice at uh, trying to do something like this. So I'm going to end up removing this battery. There's a couple other little things we have to do. We have to reburn uh, these two ROMs here and run a little wire, you know, and, and take out this resistor over here. Uh, but I'll show you that afterwards. When I tried to boot it up, I bought it non-working on eBay. I think it was like 15 bucks plus shipping. Uh, the game's not really that expensive. I think my uh, son would like to play it. But uh, I tested the battery. It should be 3.6 volts. It was at 0.45 you know, volts. So obviously the battery is dead. And it, uh, it erases the encrypted codes on here when the battery goes dead. Similar to the CPS2. It's the first time I'm going to give it a shot. Like I said, it's a little bit more involved than just changing the battery out. Or, you know, just burning some ROMs. But we'll give it a shot. Uh, you know, let's see what happens. I'm uh, going to take that battery off, take that resistor out, which I'll explain later. Uh, burn these two new ROMs, and then you have to run a wire over here to this chip. But we'll give it a shot, see what happens. Right, so I'm halfway done with this pang board. A um, couple things I took off the battery here, because the battery obviously was dead. This is why this, this board suicide. Uh, additionally, you see R33 right here. There was a resistor from here to here. So I removed that resistor, and then after we removed that resistor, I soldered in a wire from here to this pin here. And that's that little wire that I put in there. And I'll clean it up a little nicer, get the flux out of there later. But after you remove that resistor, you have to burn a, a little piece of wire from here to here. All right. Then I removed the two ROMs, took the stickers off, I erased them. Uh, there's a place I think it was ArcadeCollecting.com. They actually have the files. For the ROMs to uh, it's basically like the encrypted code uh, so you don't need the battery so I burn it erase these and burn the two ROMs now with that they want you to take the first pin on 11 H you see it's it's out of the place here and the 30th pin on the, the uh, I think it's a 11 a 13 H uh, on a 13 H and take them out of the socket and have them touch each other and what I'm going to do next uh, the reason why I stopped I wanted to show you guys because it's very difficult to see this little wire. What I'm going to do next is they want you to take these two and solder them together with a wire. And then run the wire to pin this pin right here. That one right there, which I believe is 27. So you want to want it to pin 27. Now you count them. You know, here's 1, 1 through 20. That's 21. You go up to 27. So you run a wire from pin 27 to two connecting legs which is pin 1 on this 11H and pin 30. It's conveniently, they're right across from each other, so they actually pop right out. So you put a wire in there, solder it in, run the wire here to pin 27. So I'm going to do that next, and then uh, we'll see if we get lucky. I'm here with the Buster Rose uh, Pang board. I'm trying to resurrect. Again, I removed the battery, did all the modifications that the website re uh, recommended. Uh, I tried to use the original ROMs that came with the board, and it didn't work. So I went with the, the ROMs. I bought the ROMs that uh, the, the website recommended that had the files here. Uh, one, I believe, is the 27C020 and the 27C512. Uh, once I put those on and I made all the modifications, put the wire here, uh, the board booted, but it was a graphic issue. There were some issues on it. Uh, so. I went on KLOV, asked for some help, I had a video of the graphic issues, and there was a gentleman on there who said that these chips go bad frequently. It's a custom chip. Uh, so I was having some issues. I said, well, let me give it a shot. I, I put it in. I pressed down on the chip. Maybe it was just a, a bad connection. And sure enough, it, uh, it actually cleared up the graphic issue I had. So I put a little solder on here. did a little reflow on every one of the pins here. I believe it's like 80-something pins. Uh, and put it in the machine and popped right up. I was able to play it. So... I'll put it in and show you guys a little demonstration. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a shout. But it's uh, it's booting up. So it's not a very expensive game, but I think my son and I will have fun playing this. Uh, like I said, all I had to do was reflow this after I did all the modifications to resurrect the board. So I'm here with the board all booted up in my Killer Instinct cabinet. You see everything's working uh, just fine after I did the reflow and all the modifications. And I bought this board on eBay for like 15 bucks just to get some practice with some... Uh, some of these I never did a resurrection of a, a pre CPS boards. Coin up. Oh, 
I'm not very good at this game, but you can see it's working just fine. Any questions, uh, don't hesitate to give me a shout. Thanks for watching.